Hey, what's up? This is Caleb Ward with PremiumBeat.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this Star Wars inspired hologram. Now, before we get going, I want to encourage you to go download the free project files over at PremiumBeat. Some rebels were lost trying to obtain them, so it's only right that we finish the tutorial and carry out their legacy. You'll find a link in the description below. So with our project file open here, you can see that we have our final comp and we have a HUD comp. What I'm going to do is go ahead and delete the HUD and final comp and we'll just go ahead and drop them into the trash can here and hit delete. So now we're starting off from scratch and what you can do is go ahead and simply drag this Star Wars clip into the new composition button and a new composition will be created. So the first thing we're going to do is throw in our black letter boxes. So go to layer new solid and we'll call this letter box and let's select a black solid and hit OK and OK. So go ahead and select your rectangle tool up here and just go ahead and grab the edge here. And we're just going to cut off just a little bit of the top about like that and go ahead and select the letterbox layer down here and hit Command D or Control D on a PC to duplicate and hit S for scale. Go ahead and deselect the chain link here and type in negative 100 for your Y. So now we have letterboxes on top and on bottom and because we use this negative scaling technique we know that they are the exact same size. So now it's time to add in a lens flare into our scene. Essentially, we want to make it look like BB-8 here is projecting out the hologram. So we're going to use the lens flares built into After Effects, but you could always use optical flares or any other lens flare pack that you find useful. So I'm going to go to Layer, New Solid, and we'll call this Lens Flare and hit OK. And go to the Effects Browser, type in Lens Flare, and just drop on the lens flare effect and we'll set it to a 105 millimeter prime and I'm going to change our transfer mode to add and we'll just go ahead and make sure this is below the letter boxes. So go ahead and change the flare center to being right in the middle of BB-8's eye here and we'll turn down the intensity to about let's say 30. Excellent and go to the effects browser and type in curves and drop it onto the lens flare. And we're going to go ahead and select the blue curve here. And we'll go ahead and just drag blue up pretty significantly, about like that. And go to red, and we're going to drop red down. So essentially, we want this real bright blue color here. And I'm going to go ahead and move forward. And if you take a look at our background clip here, you can see that at a certain point, there's a blue flashlight that kind of pops up off screen. And this light is just supposed to add in a little more ambient blue lighting into our scene. But we want to make it look like this light is the one that's creating the blue ambiance. So let's go ahead and set a keyframe for when the blue light pops on. And I'm going to set a keyframe for the flare brightness about here. And we'll go ahead and move backwards a few frames and set the flare brightness to zero. So now if we scrub through, we can see that it gets brighter and the blue light kind of pops into frame. Cool. Cool, so let's create a new layer. So go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and we're gonna drop on the Curves effect. And with our Curves effect applied, we're gonna go ahead and just kind of really bring this up pretty significantly, about like that. And then we're gonna go to our blue channel, and we're gonna turn up the blues, and then we're gonna go to our red channel and turn it down. So now our whole scene is bright blue. So this is obviously too bright, but if you go ahead and select your pin tool, what we can do is go in and begin to cut out the ambient lighting in our scene. So I'm just going to go in here and cut out a few shapes, maybe cut out a triangle to make it look like it's kind of projecting outwards and it's kind of a triangular shape here. And then I'm going to hit the F key for feather and I'm going to select both of these masks and just feather them out to where the lighting is just kind of soft along the edges here. And I'll go ahead and feather this one out too. And we can drag it up about like that. And go ahead and hit T for opacity and just bring it down to where it's filling the frame, but it's not super, super bright. 
And what we're going to do here is just like before, we're going to set a keyframe. But if you go ahead and select the lens flare layer, hit U, you can see the keyframes there and it makes it easier to adjust the keyframes of the adjustment layer. So go ahead and scrub forward to the last keyframe here and set a keyframe for opacity. Move backwards and we're going to set the opacity keyframe to zero. So now as BB-8's light gets brighter, the ambient lighting in the room gets brighter. Excellent. So I'm going to duplicate this adjustment layer one time and we'll call this new adjustment layer the blue fill. And this blue fill, I'm actually going to turn down the curve here. I don't want it to be quite as significant, but I do want it to be a brighter blue than what we had before. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to delete the floor layer here. So this mask number one. So we only have mask number two up here. And I'm just going to grab the edges here just to add in a little bit more brighter blue into our scene. So this is going to kind of be the inner triangle and then there's an outer triangle that's not quite so blue and click away. So just like before we have nothing and then it kind of fades on, gets bright and the bright blue light kind of pops on to our Han Solo over here. So if you go to the project panel and go to your assets folder, you'll see a lot of .png files. These .png files are what we're going to use to create our high res HUDs. So go ahead and go to composition, new composition, and this can be 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second. We'll call this HUD and hit OK. So go ahead and drag all of these PNG layers onto the HUD composition. And obviously the sizing is wrong, so we'll just work on this one layer at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off all the eyeballs here and we'll turn on one layer for this big planet here. So go ahead and hit S for scale, scale it down, go ahead and toggle the switches and turn on 3D for all of these layers. And we're just gonna kind of drag this over here and push it back in 3D space just a little bit. It's right about there. And now let's go in and turn on extra detail and we're gonna go ahead and scale this down as well and go ahead and select the rotation tool. Maybe we're gonna rotate this, kind of off center it a little bit, about like that, and go ahead and turn on the inner ring layer here, and we can hit S for scale and scale it down, and we can just kind of center it up with the planet and push it back again, about like that, and then W for rotation, and rotate it along the planet, about like that. And you can really do whatever you want. I have a specific look I'm going for, but depending on what you want your project to look like, you could change this up as you see fit. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on inner ring two here and scale it down. Hit W for rotation, kind of rotate it, spin it here, and then we can push it back in space. Just kind of drag it over here to where we have these kind of two rings that are intersecting. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this inner ring number two and kind of push it upwards about like that and maybe rotate it along the z-axis. Cool, just to add in a lot more detail here. And I'm going to turn on the 3D for the map layer here. And we'll go ahead and just drag this map layer down, maybe over to the side a little bit, and we can rotate it. Cool, about like that. And then the last one is the planet layer. And we can go ahead and scale down the planet layer and maybe rotate it a little bit and kind of rotate it backwards about like that. So you'll probably notice that there is a lot of detail in the scene right now. And really when you're creating a Star Wars HUD, you really want there to be as much detail as possible. So this should be great for us. So I'm going to go to our effects and presets browser and I'm going to type in fill here and I'm going to drop it onto our top layer. And we're going to make this just a bright blue color, about like this, and hit OK. And you can go ahead and copy that fill layer and drop it onto all of the other layers here, except for the planet layer. The planet layer, you're going to have to go to the Effects and Preset browser and find the Tint effect and drop it onto the big planet, and then we'll map the white to the bright blue, just like that. And go ahead and select all of the layers and change the transfer mode to add. So now anytime they oversect, they're going to add some color in. 
and then we're going to select our map layer here and instead of blue we're going to select a bright red color just like this and click away. So now let's add in a little depth of field to make our HUD look a little more realistic. So go to layer new camera and we'll hit OK. And go ahead and go to the drop down menu, go to camera options and make sure you turn on depth of field. And we can go ahead and crank the aperture up and we can turn up the blur level pretty significantly just so we can get an idea of where the image is going to be in focus. And it looks like our planet is completely in focus. So now we can just go ahead and scale back this blur level until we get something that we like. At about 143%, we can see that the center area is in focus and the outer areas are kind of out of focus. Now it's time to add in some rotation to our HUD just to make it seem a little more animated. So go ahead and select the inner ring one and find the Z rotation. Hold down option and select it and type in time times 50 semicolon. So now this inner ring one will just spin. You can see it here spinning. It's kind of hard to see, but it's spinning right here as the scene progresses. And we'll go ahead and copy this expression and go to the inner ring two, hold down option, select Z rotation and paste it. And do the same thing for the second inner ring two, hold down option, click Z rotation, and we're going to change this value to 60 and click away. So now we have these inner rings and they just kind of spin and we could even add in a little more spin to perhaps the extra detail here. So if we hit R with extra detail selected, you'll see the rotation parameters pop up. We'll hold down option, select C and we'll do time times three, just a low value. Now if we scrub through here, we can see it just kind of spins nice and slow. So now let's hop back over to our final Star Wars clip comp and drop down the HUD composition. So let's go ahead and change our transfer mode to screen and then we'll go over here to our effects browser and type in glow and we'll drop in glow onto our HUD here and we're going to adjust some of these values here. We'll turn up the glow radius to about 25. We'll turn up the glow intensity pretty significantly. We'll say about oh, 13. And let's turn up the glow threshold to about 77%. And I'm going to scrub forward to our last keyframe here and hit T for opacity. And I'm going to turn the opacity down to about 60%. And then I'm going to scrub forwards to where BB-8 does not have a light on. And I'm going to turn the opacity down to zero. So now BB-8's light gets brighter and the HUD pops up. Excellent. So let's add in a quick fast blur and this is just going to help it blend in a little bit better with the scene and we'll set the value to two and click away. So let's go ahead and duplicate this HUD layer and I'm going to change the transfer mode to add and let's change the threshold to zero and then we're going to turn down the radius to about 11 and go ahead and duplicate that glow layer and I'm going to set the second glow layer to AB colors and we're going to change the first color to a light blue and the second color we're going to change to a little bit of a darker blue about like that and then we'll turn up the radius on this one pretty significantly to about let's say 60 and then we'll turn down the threshold to where it's not quite as bright to right about let's say 25% and then you can turn down the glow intensity to let's say about three, about like that. And turn up the fast blur to about seven, about like that. And now what we can do is select the pen tool and go ahead and just cut out a triangle out of the center area here, about like that. And hit F for feather and feather out the edge. So now this will just make it look like this inner part is more important. It'll just kind of hyper focus some detail to the center here. And if we wanted to, we could turn down the blurriness to let's say maybe only about four. And this is looking pretty good. But one thing you'll notice is there's no reflections in this class over here or in this TV screen. So to do that, what I'm going to do is select our bottom HUD and hit command D to duplicate. And I'm going to go ahead and rename this television HUD. And we'll go ahead and drop this below our other HUDs and go ahead and turn on the 3D rotation, hit the W key for the rotation tool 
and we're just going to rotate this to where it lines up with the TV. So about like that. And now what we can do is go in and select our pin tool and we're just going to cut out along the edges of the TV here, just like this. About like that and hit T for opacity and we're going to change the opacity of the last keyframe to something really insignificant, maybe about 16% and that's looking good. And now let's add in the reflection to the glass over here. So go ahead and duplicate the HUD here and we're going to rename this glass reflection and we're going to drop this below the HUD and turn it to 3D. Now we're going to rotate it just like before and we'll drag it over here to about like that. And let's go ahead and just cut out around Han Solo here. About like this. Just keep cutting out along his body. You don't have to be perfect. We're going to go to the drop down menu and change our mask to subtract. And so now you can see the HUD in the reflection of the glass here. And what we can do is hit T for opacity. And as long as we have our last keyframe selected here, we can turn the opacity down to about 15 and click away. So now if we scrub through here, you can see there's nothing and then the HUD appears into the frame. And if you wanted to, you could go to layer, new adjustment layer and go to the effects browser, type in curves and drop it into your scene. And now what you can do is just go in and increase the contrast to make the HUD pop a little more, but it all depends on whatever look you're going for. All right, and that's about it. If you're ever looking for the best royalty-free music or sound effects, check out premiumbeat.com. Premium Beat has thousands of fantastic tracks for every video project in this galaxy and beyond. This has been Caleb Ward. We'll see you next time.